So here we are at the cross. Did it have to end like this? Was it what God wanted? Was it what Jesus wanted? Was this what we wanted? Every life, of course, on earth ends in death. For some, it comes too soon. For some, too violent. And for some, too late through medical technology today. Some deaths are gifts of life to others, but all deaths make room for others in the web of life. How to make sense then of this death? Does it have to make sense? During some time in the middle of the second century, a Christian writer did a very similar thing to what we have done today. This unknown person created a narrative of the passion and resurrection of Jesus. Like us, this literary person blended old familiar traditions with new scenes. It is possible that some of the scenes in this narrative, now known as the Gospel of Peter, were created by this writer. Other scenes could have come from older texts that were still in existence and may have referred to the trial and to the crucifixion of Jesus. This version of the Passion narrative is unique among early Christian texts as it tries to describe the moment of resurrection. And in this description, the Gospel of Peter uses the metaphor of a cross that speaks. Here is the reading from chapter 10 of the Gospel of Peter, reading from verses 1 to 5. Now when these soldiers saw this, they roused the centurion from his sleep along with the elders. They also were keeping watch. And while they were explaining what they had seen, again they see three men leaving the tomb, two supporting the third, and a cross was following them. The heads of the two reached up to the sky, while the head of the third, whom they led by the hand, reached beyond the skies. And they heard a voice from the skies that said, Have you preached to those who sleep? And an answer was heard from the cross, Yes. On this Good Friday day then, I wonder what the cross would say to us today as we're gathered here in this wonderful sacred space. The cross, I think, would speak to us of the corruption of power and especially religious authority. While Jesus himself seemed to have struggled against corrupt rulers, as did his mentor, John the Baptist, this reality is not confined, of course, to ancient past. From the Soviet gulags to the self-serving corruption of minor officials and government leaders in third world countries, we know this reality. And recently, through the Royal Commission into Institutional Sexual Abuse and the Royal Commission into the Banking Sector, we see how power can corrupt. It's all about protecting the brand at all costs. We have been shamed to see the church's attempts to cover up its own failings as survivors of church sexual abuse have found the courage to speak out against the abuse that they've suffered by clergy and church members. The cross also speaks of human evil and our capacity for cruelty to one another. This was an aspect of human experience very familiar to Jesus as he grew up in Nazareth. Just a few miles out of Nazareth, because Nazareth was just a little tiny village, there was a larger town called Sepphoris. And the Jews of Sepphoris had rebelled against King Herod's dynasty when news of his death was received. 
Varus, the Roman governor of Syria, burnt the city to the ground, sold many of its people into slavery and crucified a rebel every mile along the roads around the city. Scholars think it was over 100 people. Our contemporary record of evil is full of examples of cruelty and violence. We know that in World War II, 24 million military de deaths took place, but over 40 million civilians died. We know that in 2017, the death toll in Syria, just in one year, included 2,298 uh, 2, children, 1,536 women, making a total of 10,204 people. We were confronted a few weeks back with the New Zealand cruelty in Christchurch. The cross speaks against all of that violence and inhumane action. The cross also speaks of the compassion of God. For the cross sketches a love without limits, an engagement with creation that has no boundaries, not even death itself can take Jesus beyond the reach of God's desire for life to prevail. Death will not be allowed to have the last word, even when it seems that death is the only word that we can hear. The most hopeless situations of failure, despair and loss remain within the scope of God's compassion. And the cross speaks to us today to personal discipleship and connectedness. Knowing where his own journey of faithfulness might lead, Jesus called on those who would follow him to take up our own crosses and find ways of faithfulness in the everyday challenges of life. In our time and in our place, among the people with whom our own lives are connected to, we are to live faithfully. No sideward glances to see how others are performing, but simply a faithfulness to the call of God in our own lives and in our relationships. And the cross speaks against the divisions of the church. Today, of course, in Melbourne, there will be a march where Christians of all persuasions will gather at the 14 stations of the cross that are depicted throughout the CBD. But sometimes we're comfortably settled within the familiar patterns of our own traditions. This is the way we do it, we say. And sometimes we say, we're right. It would take too much effort to work at finding ways, new ways of being Christian in a church beyond denominations. When we're, attempt, when we're tempted not to even bother, the cross reminds us of the lengths to which Jesus went in his own quest to fulfil God's call upon his life. And the cross reminds us of the commitment of both the Uniting Church and other national churches to embrace the full hum uh, unity of all the churches. And it reminds us of our commitment to the work of the World Council of Churches and to the Victorian Council of Churches. And the cross reminds us that the cross is not the last word. Despite the public shame of it all, love continued. Deterrence failed. The public shame of it all, love continued. His movement spread. The transforming power of his vision, the kingdom of God, would eventually capture Rome and the Roman Empire. 
What should have been his annihilation becomes his ascent to prominence. So today, may the cross speak to us all. May the cross shape us. May the cross inspire us. May the cross empower us. And may the cross unite us. And our blessing. O God, our creator, by whose mercy and might the world turns safely into darkness and returns again to light, we give into your hands our unfinished tasks, our unsolved problems and our unfulfilled hopes. To your great love and protection, we commit each other here today and all for whom we love, knowing that we are always kept under the wings of your love. Amen.